China's housing market is crashing and there's virtually nothing that they can do to stop it. In this video, we're going to look at the evolution of China's real estate crisis and why there are no good options in terms of solving this ongoing problem. As I discussed in some of the recent videos on this channel, the housing sector or the construction sector are extremely important for an economy and it is the major engine of economic growth. The problem though is that the real estate sector is very boom bust. This is natural and a necessary part of an economy that is reliant on real estate. You need to cleanse the system after a large boom and make room for new productive growth on the other end. China has not done this. China has not let their real estate sector clear the excesses since the early 2000s, and they have more excess than any country has had in modern history. Let's start with some charts from a paper by Ken Rogoff called Peak China Housing to understand the core of the crisis facing the Chinese government. The red line in this chart shows the percentage of the economy that comes from real estate investment or the construction of buildings. You can see how China gets about 13 to 15 percent of its growth from the construction of buildings. This is up from about 5 percent in 2002. Compare this to the United States, which is the blue dotted line. Today, about 5 percent of U.S. growth comes from real estate construction. Even in the peak of the U.S. real estate mania, only about 7 percent of growth came from real estate investment, and China is double that. As I mentioned in my last video on housing, there are hundreds of knock-on effects from the construction of a new building, so this chart captures the total impact that real estate has on a country's economy. You can see that China is almost at 30%, which means that one-third of the entire Chinese economy is dependent on building buildings and the knock-on effects that come from that construction. If we focus on the 2006 period before the financial crisis, only Spain came close to levels like China today, and Spain had an economic crisis that they still have not recovered from. Property prices in Spain fell almost 40% and still have not retraced that 2006 peak. Spain only had levels of real estate activities above 25% of GDP for about three to four years. China has maintained this insane level of real estate dependency since 2010 a decade of complete economic reliance on building buildings. The system in China has become so dependent on real estate activities that over 35% of fiscal revenues to the local government comes from land transfer fees. Or in other words, a massive crash in real estate would pressure the finances of local governments around China. Whenever a country runs into real estate excess, a bust follows the boom and the system purges all the bad debts. In recent years, though, countries have become less willing to accept the pain for the excesses created, and China is the poster child for this. Whenever the economy starts to falter, China papers over bad debts with new debts and keeps the property bubble growing larger and larger to the point where home prices are 40% of the annual income in major cities. Really expensive cities in the United States like New York and San Francisco have home prices that are about 10 to 12 times the annual income. So you can really see just how insane this is. The home price to rent ratio in major cities in China is over 70. In other words, you can rent out your home for a 1% rate of return. When you refuse to let bad debts clear the system and instead try and paper over bad money with good money, what happens is a complete collapse in the productivity of capital. Yes, you can save the economy from a crash today, but only at the expense of weaker and weaker growth tomorrow. More good money chasing after bad money. This chart shows just how crazy the property bubble in China has become, with the housing market more than eight times the size of the stock market and the bond market. China has an existential crisis. They have linked their economy to real estate activities at all levels, including local government finance. The problem is that you cannot continue an economic model of building apartments when you have less and less people. The working age population in China is now declining and will decline every year for the next decade. These demographic estimates are also overly optimistic. The real numbers are even worse. Japan had an economic model based on real estate in the 1980s and it ended in the 1990s when population growth turned negative. Remember Spain in 2006? 
That party ended for good after the financial crisis when population growth turned negative. So now China mathematically cannot continue a real estate-based model with negative population growth. How do you add more units with less people and keep prices going up? More supply, less demand. Vacancy rates in China are climbing and prices of homes are starting to fall. They cannot keep their real estate model going, but the problem is that without real estate, one third of the Chinese economy disappears. A sector that, by the way, was the engine of growth for the entire world, not just China. China inflated their property bubble three times since 2010, and the global economy felt three distinct tailwinds. Without China, the global economy will lose the last major engine of growth. China is in a corner with no good options. Yes, they can stimulate their property sector again, building more and more buildings with less people, making the problem even more unsolvable tomorrow. More stimulus into a bad situation will force China to depreciate their currency. China has capital controls, so they try and prevent money from leaving the country. But stimulating the property sector with no demand, literally less people, would only happen by essentially printing money or issuing more bad debts. This stimulus route would require a substantial depreciation of the Chinese currency, especially as major exporting countries like Europe and Japan have seen their currencies fall by 10 to 20% in recent months. There is already pressure on China to depreciate their currency and more stimulus would add to that pressure, importing inflation into China and exporting deflation to the rest of the world. The other option is to try and slowly manage the deflation of their property bubble and accept that one third of their economy will shrink. This will push aggregate Chinese economic growth from the 8% range to the 1 or 2% range. We can already see economic growth in China slowing over the years as they've tried to deal with this problem a number of times. But now a much more serious decline in growth is in store if they choose door number two and try and slowly manage the deflation of this property bubble. China has a real estate crisis that they simply cannot solve after they've tethered the growth of their economy to reckless real estate construction. Option number one, another attempt at stimulating the property sector, will require a depreciation of the currency and the exportation of deflation around the world. Option number two, a controlled demolition of the property bubble means the world will have to get used to 1% Chinese economic growth rather than 6%, 7%, or 8%. This also means higher unemployment in China and more political instability. Either option is highly negative for the global economy as the world enjoyed a highly artificial boost from the inflation of a Chinese property bubble that has now come to an end.